Hi, this is Bren LeBlanc. Today we're going to uh, make a um, some mash networks that is going to be driving uh, or being driven by an atlas texture for some leaves that we have. So it's propagate, it's instancing uh, five different leaves that I have, and it's instancing the five leaves, and it's using um, the uh, vertex color or like point IDs to generate um, color variation. So let's start out with the Atlas map first. So I downloaded this from textures.com and it's just a willow tree leaves Atlas uh, texture. So it's just got a bunch of different leaves on it and they've got height maps. I've got a mask translucency and roughness map so I just pulled it into Photoshop so you can see here I've got all five of them so I'm gonna use the the mask so that I can go through and place in the atlas that each of those uh, polys are gonna be so let me get rid of this huge network okay and then I'll just pull up this what I called leaf library which is basically just the entire uh, network set. So I'm just gonna apply a new material to this. Call this demo leaf material. Okay, so what we wanna do first is we wanna attach the alpha channel, imported texture. And I'm going to assign the alpha. We're just gonna directly put that into color. So let's go ahead and render that, see what it's doing. Okay. So I've already went through and lined these up in the correct places they're supposed to be. What you'll do is you just create a little polyplane. Take the subdivisions down. All right, so I have this polyplane. I'm gonna go to UV. Project down Y. So let's open up our UV editor. Uh, we need to apply our demo leaf. Okay, so you can see it, it's actually got the entire uh, leaf network, which we just want a single leaf. So first you need to decide which leaf this is gonna be on. You, you can move it around later. So first I'll scale it down. Okay, and let's say we wanna do it on this leaf. Uh, I'm also gonna turn this on. Okay. One thing is, is that the aspect ratio of this needs to match the aspect ratio of the actual object, or it's going to look stretched like that. So I'm just going to pull it, going to scrunch it down to be about the same uh, size as the same dimension as the UV space, because I want my leaf to not stretch too much. Okay, so that's our new leaf there. All right, so I just went and did that the that entire process with every leaf in this. Um, this texture set. Let's make another file texture. I'm not deleting these, I'm just removing them so it's a little cleaner. Let's pull in the color map, diffuse here. All right, so I'm gonna put that color map into base color, just so we can see what it looks like. So we wanna cut that out. So I'm going to take this alpha and we need to put it into the opacity. So the reason that this one's still not cut out is because we actually have to change, we have to go into its shape node of the new object that we created. Uh, we'll call this a new leaf. Once we go into the shape node, I'm also gonna delete the history. And we need to turn, check off opaque. So let me play this there. So now it cuts through that leaf. All right, so uh, the next map, let's do the apply, let's do the roughness, make an AI range, rough range. Okay, and I'll take the this rough range and I'll put it into my specular roughness. So now what I wanna do is use this roughness as my uh, spec amount as well. 
So we'll call this leaf. Let's see, spec range. And I may want to invert this. That way that the kind of dead areas are receiving much less spec. I think the spec amount is a little intense. So I'm going to bring it down. So now let's add the uh, displacement. All right, let's call this demo leaf shading group. SG for shading group. All right, let's make a new file texture. And I will pull in my height, which is my displacement. I'll just call it disk mid. We need to make a disk shader. Leave that on there a second. There we go. Okay, cool. Now, um, let me take my, an AI range. Run it through there. This mid range. Now, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to select every single one of these shapes and first make sure that the opaque switch is off. Then you're going to have to set it to Cat Clark iterations of two and you're going to have to set the bump height and then set auto bump. Now, if you don't have, you would have to go in there and manually do that for every single leaf or you could do a little script. So I've got a little script up here that uh, is a Python script. And it, uh, so you import, you use this little line here, import my dot commands and do all selected. So this line here, and then what this does is it does for every selected object that I have, it's going to go into the shape node and it's going to set an attribute. And this attribute that I'm setting is AI subdiv to type. So what this does is one means cat Clark. Um, and then I'm also subdividing this mesh two times. And you can go in and change this. And if you want to know what things are doing, you can just click stuff. If you click something over here, it'll actually give you feedback of what that is. So if say, if I freeze the transformations, it'll tell you what that uh, operation is in Python. So you can actually just copy some of that. Yeah, I mean, you got to look up online at what the syntax is for each one of these things, but then you can find out what the thing is called uh, by just, you know, clicking here. So uh, what the command is, it's just a way that you can like kind of build scripts without really knowing programming very much. Uh, that's how I did it. So I just have this little script that will automatically set the subdivisions to cat Clark for every object I have selected and it'll automatically make the subdivisions two. And I can just change this number whenever I need to. And I also have one for opaque, which does the same thing. It just turns everything, it turns opaque off. And then I have a little rename loop, which will just, I just change this name and whatever I have selected, it will rename it this, and then it'll just append a number to it, depending on how many there are. And then for this, this height, I have a script for that too. And it also has an auto bump check. So it turns auto bump on as well. So if I, let's say, select all this. And if I look over here, subdivide, everything is opaque. Displacement set to 0.1. Now, if... Let's see, let me change this so that we can, so you can see the difference. I'll set, set it to five, which is crazy, but we'll just do it so we can see it update here. So what it did was when I set it to zero here, it turned the type off. And then when I had five here, it turned the iterations to five. So what I want to do is set this to one, which is, so this is zero, this is one, this is two. So I'm going to set it to one because I want Cat Clark and let's hit the iterations to two. Then if I select that and then do that again, 
it's set cat clark and two and that's for every single one of these objects which is exactly what we want so that's just a quick way to get everything set automatically let's run the ipr all right so we've got all those leaf atlases working now the thing is is like they're all super flat still I mean, we have displacement going, but they're all really flat. So what I usually do, let's say, let me pick this one, this one, this one. Okay. Okay. I'm going to put these into their own group, and then we're just going to deal with these four. All right, so now I have these four demo leaves. Okay, one, two, three, four. So what I want to do is I want to add some big shape variation to these things. So let's do a deformer and let's do lawn linear and then I'll do bend. I bring my attribute editor over here. Go here. Let's twist this a little bit. All right. All right, so that first leaf is now it's like kind of like cupping up this way. So let's do another one where it's they're kind of bending in on itself. So I'll do another deformer. I want to turn this. All right, so now you can see that leaf is now kind of cupping in that way. That way it's just like, you know, adding much more leaf-like shape instead of it just being super flat. Because displacement's only going to get you so far. I mean, you need to have some shape to your objects to help it along a little bit. Um, you could actually make a displacement map that is just doing this same thing, but I'd rather just uh, actually change the geo. It's pretty easy to do. All right, so let's do another. Let's do a twist, see what we can get with this. So I'm just fiddling with this. <laughs> okay, so for this one, I'm, I'm going to freeze the transformations on these. Delete the history, freeze transformations so they're stuck like that. All right, for this one. I'm going to bend it out that way. All right. Let's say that's perfect. I don't want to spend too much time on that. Okay, so we have these four leaves now. Now they're, you know, a little bit better than just flat. Another thing that I want to do is we don't have any subsurface scattering yet. So uh, we want some translucency so that light travels through this leaf. Right now that's just bounce light. That's actually not transmitting through the leaf. So let's see. Let's make a file. And again, I'm not deleting this. I'm just removing it from the, the graph. All right, transmittance or translucency, whatever they call it. Actually, we want to take the diffuse and put it into subsurface color, the transmittance, and then put it into the radius. And then we also want to, under transmission, turn up the, or not transmission, subsurface, turn the weight up. Let's see that. All right, so now we have light traveling through the leaf. So if I put this leaf on top of the other one. They're now shadowing each other. What we need to do is we need to freeze their transformations, lock them to the origin, because we're going to be instancing these leaves. I'm just going to hold down X, have them all selected, and then I'm going to middle mouse click to the middle. So it'll just lock all of them to the, the very middle. Basically, this is going to be its initial position. So I'm just going to select all these leaves. And I've just got a mash tab here. And I'll click on this mash demo ground leaves. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn on my ground plane that I was using. And it's just a kind of crappy dirt that I made. 
Um, you probably want to spend more time on it than I did. <laughs> and to begin with, by default, uh, what the instancer does is it just puts them in a straight line. Let's open up this. We'll go to the demo ground leaves. Click on that. Go to distribution. And this is number of points four. What we want is mesh. Okay. Because we actually want to these leaves to populate on a mesh. So while I have this demo ground leaves distribute tab open where it says mesh, there's an input mesh here. So what I'll do is I'll go over to my mesh, which is ground zero one. And I'm going to middle mouse click that and drag it into input mesh. All right. So now I hit play. And now you can see I have a few leaves scattering on the ground here. I want to increase the amount of leaves that I have. So if I just start pushing this number of points, it's going to start distributing more and more of them. So let's do like 500. All right, so now I have a bunch of these leaves. Now the first problem you're going to see is that our alpha channel is not working again. Uh, click on that network and we need to turn it up, turn the opaque option on for the shape node, how we did before and to set up its iterations and everything like that. So we just run that same command that I have. So I'll subdivide it, set it to opaque and set the dis uh, displacement amount. Now the problem with them is that they're all just kind of going in the same direction. Doesn't look very compelling. <laughs> So let's select that network again. And we can even increase the amount of points if we want. So we have a ton of leaves. All right. So if you go back to the main tab for that mash network, where it says uh, this, this main tab here, demo ground leaves, whenever you select on it, you're going to have these nodes. So these nodes, the first thing is that we only have one of the leaves populating right now even though we have four leaves in this group the four leaves that we made uh, what we need to do is we need to add an ID node so I'm gonna click on ID add ID node and it's set to count is four which there's four inputs and then I'm gonna set the distribution type or the ID type to random let's play that okay now it's actually uh, using all four leaf types instead of just one. And if I start moving this seed, uh, it'll just randomly distribute them. Uh, that's not enough uh, distribution yet. So let's play that. All right, what I want to do is now that we have the ID working, I'm going to click on this main one again. Back to the node, I want to add a signal. And what the signal is going to do is it's going to randomly distribute the position, the rotation, and the scale of all of these. And these are going to be based on what your uh, source objects uh, pivot point is so if it's like pivoting on a weird angle you need to go and like mess with the pivot angle which uh, they are a little bit weird but it'll work for these purposes and then you can actually increase the scale distribution as well so it the scales will be randomly a little bit different now for the position why I don't really want it to go up too high because I want it to stay on the ground so why I'm gonna leave alone but you can move X a little bit in the Z. That's fine. Because I want these leaves to be on the ground. So let's play that again. All right, so now the distribution is a little more organic. And you can add in some other uh, distributions here, or uh, other nodes here. So uh, let's say that I want to add a visibility. Is it just cuts out? randomly cuts out sections of the leaves. So if there's too many, then you can add that. I think you can also paint 
um, maps that will cut out in some areas. One thing I want to do also is I want to make a falling leaf network. So it's just not attached to the ground, but just leaves falling through the air. So what I need to do is I need to duplicate this network. So the instance network. So remember these demo four or these demo falling in these four leaves. What I'll do is I will duplicate that. And we're going to unhide those so that we can see them. Okay, cool, they're still there. And I'm gonna make another mesh network. Let's call these demo. Oh, you know what I did, I called those demo falling. <laughs> these are actually demo ground. All right, this is demo falling, cool. All right, so let's make a new mesh network. And we'll call this demo falling leaves. All right, so for these leaves, I want to add these. I want to set the distribution type to grid. And what that's going to do is it's going to do a, a, like a volumetric grid of leaves. So let's do like 30, 30, and 30. So it's doing 30 leaves across in X, Y, and Z. And then the distribution, let's do 50, 50, and 50. So it's just a random grid of a bunch of these leaves. 30, 30 cubed, I think. Is that what that is? Three to three. Uh, let's just render that. Let's see what it does. Probably going to take a lot of time. Not too bad. Okay, so that's way too many leaves. So what we want to do is we want to add some um, nodes to this thing. So first let's do a, oh, let's do an ID and we'll set it to random so that it's going to randomly select between those four leaves that we had in that group. And let's also do visibility node so that'll start turning down the visibility of those leaves all right let's play that and we also want to add in a signal to change the rotation the z and we can mess with position and then i'll increase the scale randomization a little bit too all right so now all these leaves are falling in I mean, that's a lot of leaves. That's almost like snowfall. So uh, we could go back to our visibility and just start taking that down a little bit. And you can also mess with the original distribution, but I tend to start with a lot and then start bringing them down with different signals. Okay, so now we need to set the alpha channel up the same way. So let's go back to our tab here and let's set the subdivide opaque switch and the displacement height update that scene okay so now all the leaves in that network are now being alpha properly now one thing about this is that they're all the same color so I kind of want to do a similar thing uh, that I did with the uh, planks, I want to do some random uh, randomization for each of these. So how I want to do that is because these are all in one mesh network and they're considered only one mesh, uh, randomizing by object ID is not going to work. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make all right, let's use this just diffuse. So let's make an AI switch first. Delete that node. And I want to plug this into a subsurface color. And we'll just put it into base color as well, just for the heck of it. All right, so I'm going to make some color correct nodes. So leaf CC. Call this demo leaf CC one, two, let's just do three. Make it easy. 
All right. Input. And you actually probably want to spend a lot of time uh, getting these colors right instead of just, you know, trying to color the entire thing. Um, but for the demo, we're just going to show you, show you working. There, okay. Let's see, leaf, switch. All right. Get a couple leaves out here, so I don't want to render so much. All right, we'll click on this leaf switch. Right now, nothing's going to happen uh, because we haven't done anything yet. So let me go to this first um, CC switch, which is the input zero, which is the first one that's active. And let's just do something crazy, like make it blue. And then let's go to the next switch. Actually, let's go to the last one. So we'll go to input uh, two, which is CC3. So I'll click that. And let's make this like a like a pink. Just so you can see the difference of these leaves. Obviously you would want to do like autumn colors or brown or whatever, but for the sake for the sake of uh, argument, we're just gonna do that. So we have like a the normal green one, we have that blue one, and this pink one. So let me just make sure that they're working. So Okay, blue, green, and pink. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to drive this by randomization. It's a little tricky. Uh, it, I had the same problem that I had last week when I was trying to find out what the object ID was. So I asked on Arnold Answers if I could get the point ID into my MASH network. That way that I could drive the same type of variation. And Brian Foley actually helped me out do that. So what you have to do is you have to use vertex color. So first let's make an AI user node. An AI user data, data color. And then we'll make an AI random. And then we'll make an AI range. Okay, so I'm just going to out color, out color into input color into my random, my random into the input, and then this last uh, arch or the range goes into my index. Okay, leaf vertex color vertex random. Okay. So I've got an AI range, random node, and a AI user node. And what we, how we have to use that is we have to go back into my ground leaves um, group, my demo ground leaves group, go into the node, add node section, and then we want to add a color node. So by default, it's going to have a color set name as color set, which you can just use that. And I'm going to randomize the hue, randomize the saturation, and randomize the value. The next thing I need to do is I need to click on the shape node for this network. So I'm going to just click on the network mesh, go to its shape node, go to Arnold, and then go down to export and then click on export vertex colors. Okay. And I want to do the same thing with my ground leaves. Export vertex colors. And then I need to, for my ground leaves, I need to add a color node as well. And color sets fine. All right, so I randomize those. Now let's go back. to my uh, the hypershade here. So I need to click on my user data node and I'm gonna type color set because that's what that set is called. It's called color set. So now that randomized vertex color set 
is going through this out color and then it's going into this random node and then it's going into the range node which is gives, it gives me the control so if I plug this vertex color directly into base color let's do subsurface color because that's the one that's going to show up play that all right there we go all those leaves on the ground all right then for the falling leaves I also need to add a color node as well we will randomize those okay so that's the randomized color directly plugged in so what we want to do is use that AI switch so I'm gonna put that into base color and into my subsurface color so now this random vertex color user node is being randomized and then it's run through this uh, range node just like we did before so and for the the random node make sure that we set the uh, random to the output to color all right so now I've got my blue leaf my green leaf and my pink leaf that we had set originally to our uh, color correct node I could make something maybe a little more reasonable I'll select the last one which was the pink one I think make that one just like a little bit yellower all right so now we've got all three of our variations uh, being driven randomly and as we update this network it will interactively um, randomize all the leaves all right so that's it for this video i'll see you in the next one